All right, our opening statement tonight, our opening statement is so simple, right? Our opening statement is simply, I am ready, right? Are you, can you say it with me? I am ready. One more time. I am ready. We just take that into our time of prayer. So we open our minds and our hearts to the activity of God. We just announce to the universe that we are ready. We are ready. We are ready for all the good, all the blessings, all the joy. We are ready for this year. That our soul is ready for the year that we're about to have. We are ready to be that blessed. We are ready to know that much good. We are ready to have that deep and wonderful relationship with God. We are ready to walk in grace. I'm ready. I am ready. And we just simply let go of any fear, any concerns, any worries. For we know the truth that your soul is ready. Your soul's ready for this great, gorgeous, wonderful life that is for you. I am ready. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, it is done. Amen. And I want you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to a greater experience of the Holy Spirit. To a greater experience of the activity of God moving in and through you. That whatever needs to be changed or blessed or healed We allow that dynamic power of God in us to do a mighty work. That the power of God in you is greater than anything in the world. That this infinite presence and power is at work in your life for pure good. Holy Spirit, we are ready. We are ready to be deeply, wildly blessed. We are ready to give our gifts in the greatest possible way. We are ready to fully express all that you are within us. For we know in this new year that as we express more and more of the gifts of God, as we lay hold of that infinite spirit that is within us, as we give and share and serve, we are blessed and beyond our wildest dreams. That we allow our soul today to be fully awake to all that God is within us. I am fully awake to the glory of God in me. 
I am fully awake to the glory of God within me. Each and every one of us is a living expression of the divine. And in this new year, we ignite our soul with all that God is within us. We allow our spirit to express the love, the joy, the peace of the infinite. That there is no limit to all that God is within us. So I want you to take a moment and in the silence to feel the activity of the Holy Spirit in you. Tonight we are waking up. We are waking up to the greatness within us. We are waking to the glory of God. To be fully awake men and women of God and to express all that God is. In the name and through the power of the living Christ we give thanks. And so it is. Amen. So a shout out to everybody who's watching us online. Welcome to, to Vision Quest 2016. So Vision Quest 2016 is a multi-dimensional process of the first four weeks in January where we will lead you beyond the life that you know through confronting your fears into a powerful spiritual awakening and then creating a plan for expanded life experience. Doesn't that sound exciting? I'm so excited about this. I can hardly believe it, right? So here's the deal, right? So what is a vision quest? Vision quest, the term vision quest was created by anthropologists in the 19th century to describe a vision process that young men usually would go through in the plains, Native Americans, when they would go from puberty to adulthood, they would go on a vision quest. And what would happen in this vision quest, that they would leave their village, their community, and they would go out into the wilderness, out into the desert, out into the unknown. 
And usually it would be a time of fasting. It'd be a time of prayer. It would be a time of being completely by themselves. And the idea as they went into the wilderness was they wanted to have a vision. They wanted to have a vision for themselves. They wanted to have a vision of possibilities for their life. And oftentimes they were given visions for their community with the idea that their vision, that they could take it back and inspire the people around them, their community, to a greater vision of what could be. And I don't want to miss that element of this journey. Because the reality is, as we embark on this spiritual process, I believe that you're going to get a vision for your life, for who you are in your life, that is greater than maybe you've ever held before. And I believe there is a high probability that you will get a vision for not only yourself, but for our community and our world. Because the reality is, right now, the world needs a greater vision. Right? We need a vision that draws us together, that unifies us, that something that we'd all be willing to work together to create. Because right now, the, the primary visions that we seem to be driving our existence is a visions of separation, of dividing, of my group or my people or my family against, 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 against. And so what would happen this month if you were given a vision for your life that was significantly greater than you knew how to accomplish? Right? What if it really was that great? And what if the only way that you were able to fulfill that vision is actually take a closer walk with God? What if you would actually need the Holy Spirit to move through you to do that which you've been given to do? See, one of the advantages of having a small vision for your life is that you don't need any help. Right? Your ego says, thanks, I've got this. I've got a plan. I, I know how to do this. This is small enough. Thank you very much. I can handle this. Right? Right? And then your ego just to, gets to go off on its merry way, being in charge, creating things, moving and shaking to the best of its ability, and it, it goes off, right? But there's a moment where you realize that the, the vision that your ego is creating for you isn't big enough to satisfy your soul. It's like, I, I can have that. I can get that. I know where I'm going, but I don't really want that. I want something so much more than that. And not only do I want it for myself, but I want it for everybody. Because if you look around, there is a discontent in the world today. And how we are going about expressing that discontent differs but there is a discontent. There is a, there is a hunger in people. That the life that we've created, the world that we've created, is just too small for our souls. And we have to create a much bigger vision that's big enough that we all get to win. See, a small vision, only some get to win. You know, if, the, if there's not enough to go around, then the first one who gets to the blue light special at Kmart is the one that wins, but everybody who came in second or third or fourth, they're, they're sorry out of luck, right? But if you create a, bi a vision big enough, you can actually create a vision big enough so that we all get to win, right? So it's not about some win and some lose, but, but how do we create a world where everybody gets to win? And I know it sounds, yeah, 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 it sounds so mamby-pamby, so... But what if it's just true? 
What if it's just true? And what if the vision that God is going to give you is big enough for everyone? Right? What if we've just outgrown small visions? And it's time for something so much bigger. Okay, so what are the aspects of this program? So week one, we're going to begin by leaving what you know. So tonight, that's what we're going to focus on, leaving what you know. Week two, we're going to talk about confronting your fears, and that's going to be so much fun, right? How much do we love to confront our fears? So in week two, we're going to confront our fears. Week three, we're going to have a profound spiritual experience right on schedule. We're going to put it into our day timer at 11.15. We're going to have a profound spiritual experience. And then in week four, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything that we've been through and create a game plan for an expanded, more meaningful, deeper, more wonderful life. And there's three aspects of this program. The first one is the weekly lessons here on Wednesday night. The second one is a Sunday night conference call that I'm doing, and if you'd like to be a part of that, you can send me an email, and I'll put you on the list, and it's going to do a, a Sunday night conference call for people, and we've got now people all over the country that are doing this conference call. And then on Tuesday mornings, I'm going to lead a meditation that we can practice. So there's three aspects, Wednesday night service, Sunday night conference call, and Tuesday morning meditation. And, if you, and we can sign you up for that if you want to. And, and, it, and to sign up, you have to give us your email, um, but then at the end of four weeks, you can just be pr- removed from the list. But that way I can communicate with you throughout this four weeks, okay? So that's the deal. So how many of you can see times in your life when you've already been on a vision quest? Maybe when you, when you went off to college or if you went away to school or, or maybe if you went in the military or maybe, you know, even, even a divorce can be a vision quest, right? You know, my wife in the last year, even being all the things that she's gone through, she's had her own little vision quest, but it's been in bed, right? Because she literally had to leave the life that she knew and go hang out in more quiet, more prayer, more solitude than maybe she's ever had in her life, right? And so we can probably see times where we've had a vision quest, but we didn't even know we were on one. But we left the life that we knew. And over and over again, the first element of a vision quest is you have to be willing to leave an experience of the life that you knew for a time. Now, it doesn't mean you never get to go back, but it means that for a time, you leave what you're used to so that something bigger and greater can happen. We have a family friend, Catherine, and Catherine last year went to High Mountain Institute it's in Colorado, and she and her family, they live in Massachusetts, in the Berkshires of Massachusetts, and she had met somebody who went and did this survival program. She was 17 years old, and she wanted to spend a semester learning survival skills, and it was part of her high school experience. And, and her parents are so wonderful that they let their 17-year-old baby out into the wilderness for a semester in survival training and all of her other classes, but the real focus was survival training. And she comes from a very small, protected, wonderful little community, wonderful little family. And her, her, she, I, I interviewed her today, and I wanted to know all the things that about the experience, why she chose it, why she did it, what was it like for her. And she said, you know, one of the defining things why I did this was my dad said to me that his mother had an expression, that if you keep doing what you've always done, you always know where the, ro- the ceiling and the floor is, but it never changes very much. Right? And she said, what I realized is I wanted a bigger ceiling in my life. So she left her little community for a semester. She came out to Colorado, and she learned survival skills. Like, she is just the most 
precious, uh, you're going to see her next week. She's the most precious. And she said, you know, I didn't know how to do most of the things that they were teaching us to do. And she said, I wasn't very good at it at all. I mean, I just did not know how to do this stuff. She said, I didn't know how to feed myself in the wilderness. She said, I didn't even know how to get water. I didn't know how to make, a, you know, a place to sleep. I didn't know how to do any of this. And she said, but I learned, and I learned in one semester. She's, and I said, so what were the biggest challenges you had? She said, well, it was learning the, the, the rhythm of a new way of being. She said, it was one of the biggest life changes for me is that I didn't have to ask anybody permission to go get water. I didn't have to have anybody's permission to make a meal. If I wanted to eat, I had to do it. And, and she said she did two and a half days in the wilderness by herself. And her final was six days, three girls. She was the team leader, and she led these young women out into the wilderness of northern Utah around Moab, and they spent six days living off the land together. It was a game changer for her. It was literally a game changer. So tonight, would you be willing to entertain the idea of creating a space where you leave what you know for a greater experience. And it doesn't have to be for a whole semester, right? It can be for an afternoon. When I got this idea for this talk, I was hiking Lookout Mountain, which is just down the street, right? And usually what I do is I hike around Lookout Mountain. Well, that day I decided to hike to the top, right? And if you get to the top, then there's a point where, now I'm not recommending this, but the trail pretty much stops. Like if you've hiked it, there's a trail stops, and you kind of have to scramble over rocks to get to the top, right? But if, and, and the, you're scrambling over rocks, or at least I was, um, and um, it got to the point where I had to, you know, I usually hike with my dog. I had to let my dog go, which I don't usually do and stuff because there's coyotes. I don't. Um, and so I let my dog go because he was actually up to the top much faster than I was. Um, <laughs> And he was like, okay, Dad, come on, come on, come on, right? So, um, but you get to the top, and you have a different point of view. So as many times as I hiked around the outside, going to the top is different. And when you leave what you know, there's this moment where you're actually ready for a new experience. Now, one of the things about a vision quest is that you're invited to take it by yourself. We, we are very much a people of a community. We're people of a litter, right? We, we tend to, to want to be together, and, and being together is fabulous. But to really do your vision quest, I'm going to invite you to give yourself an experience over the next seven days where you're actually alone, where you're actually alone with your own thoughts, with your own experiences, with your own fears, with your own insecurities, with yourself, so that you have an opportunity to have an experience with you that you probably wouldn't have if you had somebody else there. So can you imagine today going on a vision quest and allowing yourself to have an experience that there is a probability could be greater than you could imagine. And one of the things that I like about this, this whole concept, is that Jesus went on a vision quest. I mean, he did. He straight up went on a vision quest for 40 days and 40 nights, reading, reading from Matthew. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and he was tempted by the devil. And he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he said to it, For it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
And then the devil took him by, to a holy city and sent him on the pinnacle of the city. And he said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written that you will, that you will give angels charge over you. And on their hands you will bear up, be lifted up, and at least you strike your fit against the stone. And Jesus said to him again, for it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to another high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory that was all around. And he said to them, he said to him, all of these things I will give to you if you simply f fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and to him only shall you serve. And then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. That was the beginning of his ministry. He was baptized by John the Baptist, and then he went and spent 40 days in the wilderness to prepare his soul for what was next for his three-year ministry. And so what if God has so much good for you that by giving yourself a break, a space, it could actually be revealed to you? Now, how much time do you need? Well, it would be great if we could do it on a commercial break. You know, between, between quarters, you know, it'd be great. Turn off the TV for five minutes and so get I am wide open to anything you want to drop in here. I know my team's getting beat, but I also know that I'm willing to give you the next five minutes. And any spiritual realization or enlightenment that you want to place upon me, I am absolutely ready, right? But for most of us, how many of you have ever had a spiritual experience at a commercial break? Like for most of us, it's not quite it works. So, so how much time alone do you need? And it's probably more than you want. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, maybe it's when you walk the labyrinth. You come back when the, when the campus is quiet and you walk the labyrinth for a couple hours. Maybe you go on a spiritual retreat. Spend overnight in the silence. Maybe you check yourself into a Motel 6 right? That would probably take you out of what you know, right? Because one of the things that happens is that when we remove ourselves from what's regular and normal, we begin to listen more. We do. So the first thing is you got to leave. It would be great if you could have a spiritual experience in your lazy boy. Right? But there's a time when you have to leave. You have to leave the life that you know. And the next thing that happens, you got to leave. Leaving takes courage. It takes courage to stop what you're doing and remove yourself from the patterns that you're used to so that you have an opportunity to be more open and receptive to the Spirit of God within you. It takes courage because you're not in control at that moment. Whether you go and spend an afternoon at a park or go on a little odyssey or a little journey, the moment you step out of the life that you know, it takes courage. And sometimes it takes more courage than we think it should. Because sometimes we get scared on these things. Like what's going to happen? What, what am I going to do? How am I going to eat? What, who's going to take care of me? Blah, 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 blah. So the second one is courage. And the third one is that you, get, you have to begin to look at what you stand on. What is the faith that allows you to get through a day. And one of the most profound experiences of a, of a vision quest is when you discover more God in you by doing something that seems harder than you want to do.
Has everybody had that experience already in their life? Where something was much harder than you wanted it to be, much harder maybe than you even thought you could do, but in somehow in going through it, you realized that you could actually do it, that there was a power of presence within you that allowed you to do it that you wouldn't know was even there if you didn't put yourself through that situation or if life didn't put you through that situation. One of the things that I did when I talked to Catherine today, and, and Catherine said, you know, and we're going to talk about this more in four, the fourth week. She said, but you know, the thing that was so amazing is I felt like I changed so much in that semester. And then she said, but when I came back to my family and my friends, it was amazing to me how much I kind of reverted back into the old me. And she said, but the most amazing thing happened was the more time I spent with my family and friends, I began to live more and more of the new me. I began to express more and more of the courage it took me to survive those experiences. See, if you believe that people are kind of limited and frail and timid, then you have to make sure they're protected. And you have to be very careful how you push them out of the nest because you don't know if their wings are going to work. But that's not who you are. That's not who you were created to be in the world. You're an amazing expression of God. And the very power of God is within you. So your homework, I want you to be willing to go out there and to do the thing that your soul is going to invite you to do. And each one of us may have a different experience. But I want you to give yourself a, an out there experience. Physically, mentally, emotionally. Do you know what beginner mind is in Zen Buddhism? Beginner mind in Zen Buddhism, it's called Shoshin. And, and what it is, is the idea that no matter how many times you've done something, there's a tendency to believe that you know how to do it. Right? And the more times you've done something, the more you have a belief that you know how to do it. And so you tend to do things over and over again, not with a new mind or a beginner's mind, but with a mind that says, I know how to do it. You know, when, when in, my, in between stints here at Unity Phoenix, I served a ministry in Naples, Florida, which is a beautiful ministry, beautiful community, beautiful place, Right? I had just left a ministry that I felt like I had did a great job serving here, right? That I felt like I knew how to lead a church, right? So when I went to Unity of Naples, I was going to show them how great I could lead a church, right? Because gosh knows, look, look it's, it's fabulous, right? Well, the most amazing thing happened, right? It didn't work quite as well when I thought I knew how to do it, right? So it was about six months, nine months into my tenure there where I realized that I was trying to put a square peg in a round hole because I knew best, right? Have you ever done that? Like, you take your preconceived ideas on how it's supposed to work, and I was going to do that, and I was going to help them, and I was going to show them, and, and it was just, and it was like, it was, it was not pretty. <laughs> right? For the first six months, it was not pretty. Right? And then I got to the idea, well, how did we get successful here? You listened to God, and you did what you were told. Like, not once did you think, I know how to do this. So here you are, thinking that you know how to do it, and how well is it working for you, Richard? Not so well, right? So here's the idea, right? I want you out. 
I don't care where it is. I want you to let go of what you know. I want you to let go of your preconceived ideas. I want you to feel vulnerable. I even maybe want you to feel a little afraid. And in the midst of all of that, I want you to go deeper into your relationship with God. I want you to go deeper. And I want you to see if you can feel more and more and more of how much God is in you. And I want you to have a vision for yourself that is greater than you're holding tonight. Because what I know to be true is that you were created in the image and likeness of God. But because we can't always hold that, because we can't always believe that, we go through one experience after another until we can see the truth. And the truth is that you are whole and complete and lacking in nothing. So you ready? So here's your homework. Did you hear me? I want you to have an experience in the next week where you leave your life that you know for an hour or a half day, a whole day, overnight, you could decide how much you play. Whether it's on a hike, whether it's, you get to decide. Walk the labyrinth, and I want you to go do it just with God. Just with God. And to see at the end of that experience if there's something, maybe even just a little something, that feels changed within you. Because the more you need God, the more God shows up in your life. The more that you think you can do it, the more we tend to push that little voice to the back. Because I got it. I can do this. So you willing to try? Okay, so if you want to be on the conference call on Monday, on Sunday night, shoot up my email address, will you? There it is, right there. Is it there yet? Rogers at unityphx.org? Is that what it says? Okay, so that's my church email address. Okay, so take the D out. R-O-G-E-R-S. Okay, but thank you for noticing. I appreciate it. All right, you ready? Let's pray. I want you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to the activity of God that is right here, right now. And I want you to feel the activity of God that's within you. I want you to feel the greatness that is within you. And this week, we're going to put it to the test. We're going to put it to the test that we are ready for something special. We are ready for something different. We are ready for something greater. We are ready for more God. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks, and so it is. Amen.
Together our prayer for protection. There it is. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. God bless you all. Have a great week.